Legion of Superheroes, issue 4, Brian Michael Bendis writing with Ryan Sook on the art. So this was finally the uh, orientation <laughs> of of John Ken. He finally got there. Yeah, well, not all of um, it. No, because something happens. But I will say, for as much as this is not my Legion, uh, Bendis is getting closer with each issue. So the fact that we get to see the origins of, well, not exactly the origins, but the backstories of each of the founding members. Mm-hmm. And well, so to, even, even before we get to that, the first yeah. page does a good job of explaining a uh, triplicate girl, right? Because I don't know mm-hmm. these things, right? And it explains right. triplicate girl is one person. It's not three people that mm-hmm. merge together. It's one person who splits in three. There's a difference. <laughs> right. And it makes that very clear. And I'm like, okay, I understand these things. And th- they go in, in, in their culture, right? So each one of them, they're part of the same thing, right? So they can go out like multiple men, go learn things, and then when they reabsorb back into one, that one figure understands everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Which but, is a real cool thing. But then she drops a bombshell here. That she wants to marry um, John Kent? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I so- like that. Uh, that was fun, but uh, it's, it clearly explained, and because they're very distinctive here, you've got the three, you know, characters who's, you know, one's got pink hair, one's got blue hair, one's got yellow hair. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I'm always going to remember that basic rule, I think. Even if I forget, you know, the planet they're from, if I forget some of these other details in time, mm-hmm. I'll remember that basic rule of them, and that, that that's kind of a hook for them. And then I think the flashbacks, you know, when it goes into the orientation, and it's like, okay, so here's how Saturn Girl joined, or, you know, ended up fi- founding the Legion. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had just enough to tell me, you know, what it was like with her talking to her mother, what it's like for her on Titan, and here's, you know, her getting the news that she's been, you know, brought in to, you know, talk to the, the you know, the, the president, Madame President, of yep. of the United Which Planets. That, that R.J. Brand traditionally looked like a human, but ended up being a Durlin. Mm. So the fact that Bendis is going so different here, I mean, R.J. Brand could still be a Durlin for all we know, but this is not what it's looking like so far. And um, I will say, I but, love that the art on this uh, flashback here is so different. Mm-hmm. The coloring is so different from the rest of the book. It really yeah. feels otherworldly, uh, the Saturn yep. stuff, the, or the Titan stuff, so, I should say. Yeah, and the fact that, like, they're, they're part of a, a collective in the mind, and Emra basically, like, like most teenagers, wants to get away from that hometown. And they're kind of like, well, why do you want to leave the hive mind? Well, I, I want to be individual. And it's like, well, no, you're, that's just teenage rebellion, you know? And, and that's the, the primary motivation for her to, to leave. Um, and then we get to, uh, to Garth and his sister, which I'm glad that they did, because traditionally the people of Winath are born as twins. So that's why when it said mo- his moms, I, I want a little bit more on that because is that still a thing mm. because there's there's six kids in that family uh, just, and don't think i didn't partner them up uh, um, just uh, one thing before to start talking about that specifically it's just what they are yeah. on the uh the emra stuff it's, i th- i thought yeah. uh the, the, her face on the last page of that almost looked very sagic to me the the way it was drawn mm. uh not quite but almost there i just you know i wanted yeah. to mention that uh but yes yeah, so it gives you yeah the, uh, you know lightning lad and his sister and uh, them yep. kind of like fighting back these peacekeepers and it's oh, mostly yeah. his sister and his sister's asked yep. to go and like maybe hey because you stood up to these these police keepers right. uh, we're inviting you and your brother and she doesn't want to go but then he's like does it have to be both of us can I, can I just come <laughs> yeah yeah so. and it feels like he's kind of in his twin sister's shadow mm-hmm. always so that he's taking this um, and that's again playing with, with the with the Legion mythos is that they're always together. You know, it's lightning lad and light lass. And so the fact that they're splitting them up and I almost feel like she's going to be a part of the, the, I think they're called the renegades, but they're basically like an anti-hero version of the Legion where they're doing things on their own terms outside of the United planets. Hmm. Um, and cause she seems very much of that revolutionary type, right? That, they're standing and, up for the people of Winath against the science police. Against the state, yeah. Uh, so the independent kind of like, you know, freedom right. fighters, yeah. And yeah, and so the fact that they do that and 
of course she's not going to go work with a man of the United Planets. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Ben is setting something up. You know, the fact that he's made a point here of yep. introducing her, clearly defining that she is this way. Yep. She's going to be. I mean, maybe given how this issue ends, where the Feder uh, Federation. So I'm thinking of Star Trek, uh, United Planets. Uh, the well, come on, United Federation of Planets is very similar to United Planets. All right, give me a break. It is. Carter. I'm seeing. I'm just. I'm I seeing, will give you no such. Break. I'm seeing him shake his head at me. Uh, well, let's just be professional. So you know, we get Cosmic Boy as well. His introduction to how he ended up there. Uh, basically, he was like a sports player for some weird sport on his planet. Yeah. And that's what led Magnum to him. Ball. Yeah. But it does not look like the Magnum Ball as I did because it looks like he's. It just says he's a champion. <laughs> And it looks like he's fighting some robot dinosaur Ma- things. So. Mass like, back in my day, Magma Ball was like this. <laughs> yeah, 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 so it never, they don't say Magma Ball, do they? They just say he's a champion of some kind. Yeah, I don't think they actually... Uh, because uh, the the note here to John is that it's 1% of the population of, of his planet of Brawl have powers over magnetism. Yes. He's one of those 1%, which I liked, and so... He became this champion, and that's why he gets selected. So almost, so each of these planets has their own way of basically offering up someone to the Legion. Yeah. Like this is why, you know, Emra goes because she feels like she wants to be different. And then Garth wants to get out of his sister's shadow. And he basically rose, you know, uh, Cosmic Boy. I'm, I'm blanking on his, his first name. Rock. Rock ends yeah. up going through, you, you know. Do you know what works about this issue so well? So this is the issue that I've been kind of wanting since this book started. It was an mm-hmm. issue that kind of clearly defines who some of these characters are so that I've got hooks and, yep. uh, you know, some of the main cast. And it has R.J. Brand come in and her demeanor with these characters is very interesting because she, like, you know, at one point Emma's like, I can't read your mind. Should, should I be trying to? And she's like, no, there's, there's natural blocks in place because of, you know, you know, political espionage mm-hmm. reasons like you know but you know please do try because if you can get through then there's something wrong and i should it should be fixed so by all means right. try and read my mind um and the way she talks to him and then something attacks the ship they're on and it kind of ends yeah. there you know the, the john gets pulled out of the orientation as we see like i'm just about to start to fight in this flashback mm-hmm. and this is clearly the, the formation of the of the legion right um right. And we have, you know, Brainiac say, okay, the you know peacekeepers are here, and they're basically saying, okay, uh, the Legion are, are locked down until further notice, and this comes from Madame President, R.J. Brand. And what's really good about this issue is that it shows us in that flashback how she is with them and how she's very receptive to their new style of them right. being these new kind of the, uh, you know, the, the modern take and a new type of peacekeeping that maybe hasn't been tried before. That's why she wants to try this new thing with them. And she's very receptive to how they are and what their feelings and she's very nice to them. The way she says, hey, Saturn girl, yeah, try and read my mind. Go for it. To hear in the very the last page, but we don't get to see her say this herself, admittedly, but we hear that these peacekeepers are here to like, lock down the Legion from her command. It clearly says, no, that doesn't jive with what we just saw. So either this is a lie or like, or something's really changed. Like something's made her completely yeah. change her mind. Because they because they even say, well, you're not done, John, with the with it yet. Yeah. So you'll get there. And so I also wanted to point out that the that computer. So it's almost like this Cerebro meets the Danger Room scenario where it puts John in their memories. Uh, Caputo is traditionally a villain. That's a mm. that that's almost like Ultron. Where he's this AI that comes to life, so I'm wondering if that is up the, you know, way with mm-hmm. with Bendis. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But yeah, um, I'm loving this 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 book. I oh, sure. <laughs> I had a big stupid grin on my face because finally this feels like familiar Legion, and I get why Bendis would would want to shake it up at the beginning and make you wait four issues to get to this type of stuff. Because every other Legion book has has started with the formation of, you know, the three saving R.J. Brand and then becoming the Charter out of out of the United Planets. So here I'm I'm betting that's what happens. But Brand doesn't. If I had to guess, Brand doesn't like how powerful. Or it's a different Brand, right? Like someone swapped him out or something happened. So, but yeah, uh, the Janet art for the for the flashbacks basically, mm-hmm. right? Is fantastic um so art's still still solid for for the main yeah still really going good. on with the legion um, yeah. but as someone who needed this kind of like footing this this grounded sort of like okay here's a basic understanding of the main characters in the legion this was 
easily the best issue so far. It didn't feel overstuffed with other characters like yelling things at each other. Um, and it, it set up enough in these flashbacks that the final moment it had some weight to it where it's like, hey, why is, why is you know, RJ Brand doing this? And, you know, and like you say, there's that hint where John says, wait, but RJ Brand, Brand is in support of the right. Legion. And then one of them says, oh, you didn't finish the orientation, did you? <laughs> as if, you know, okay, so there's, there's yeah. more to the story. Like something else flipped her by the end of the story. So that's really interesting i think it tells a story it introduces a lot of things this could be a great first issue it honestly could be um yeah and i don't necessarily dislike the previous three issues but i, I do think this is one that's it's done the best job of hooking me in so uh mm-hmm. but good and i like you say the art's uh really good uh throughout so uh what are you giving this matt uh i'm, I'm giving this a nine i stupidly Whoa. i'm not ready yeah. to go, go that far I, I will give this a solid eight out of ten but uh yeah, yeah I, i'm glad matt's uh, having his his cake and eating it too